I'm Bob Duhamel, and this is my classroom and studio. I have my blue shirt on for wardrobe continuity, so let's get started and learn how to measure voltage. We've already established that voltage is a pressure that electrons exert on each other and is just like air pressure. A battery is like a pump. It has a high pressure or high voltage side and a low pressure or low voltage side and it pushes electrons out the high voltage side and sucks them back in the low voltage side, sending electrons around an electric circuit. Now, voltage, being just like air pressure, is measured like air pressure. I am at Mission Bay in San Diego, which is at sea level, and I'm going to measure the pressure inside my tire. And my gauge says 30 pounds per square inch. Now the question is, what is the air pressure inside my tire? And it's not quite that straightforward because like any pressure gauge, this measures the difference between two pressures. Outside I have a pressure of approximately 15 pounds per square inch at sea level, pushing in all directions, including pushing in on this tire. Inside the tire, I have a pressure of 45 pounds per square inch, pushing out in all directions. And the gauge tells me the difference, which is 30 pounds per square inch. Now what I'm going to do is go to a higher altitude and see what happens. Here on Mount Laguna, we're at an altitude of about 6,000 feet, and the ambient air pressure is about 12 pounds per square inch. All things being equal, I should still have 45 pounds per square inch in my tire. So when I measure my pressure, I should see 33 pounds instead of 30. Let's take a check. Right on the money. In Tibet, there are roads that go as high as 18,000 feet where the ambient air pressure is seven and a half pounds per square inch. There, if I measure the pressure with my gauge, I should see about 37 and a half pounds. And if I can get my tire up into space where the air pressure is zero, I should measure the actual 45 pounds that is in the tire. So the tire pressure gauge sees zero pounds per square inch in space, 45 pounds per square inch inside the tire, and tells me the difference, which now is the actual 45 pounds inside the tire. So any kind of a pressure gauge is going to have a way of sensing two pressures and telling you the difference. Now voltage is also a pressure. So a voltmeter has a way of sensing two voltages and telling you the difference. This is a typical voltmeter and it has two leads, a black lead and a red lead. The way we are expected to use it is to put the red lead at a higher voltage and the black lead at a lower voltage and then the voltmeter tells us the difference between those two voltages. I have drawn the schematic symbol for a battery on the board. This is a 12 volt battery. This would be the positive side, that would be the negative side. These represent wires coming from the battery. And I'm going to use my red and black pins to simulate a voltmeter to look at the battery and see how we would use a voltmeter to measure voltage. Normally, we would expect to put the red lead at the higher voltage and the black lead at the lower voltage. So, we'll put the red lead here and the black lead here. I now have the schematic symbol for a voltmeter on the board. I have the red lead here and the black lead here. Positive is higher than negative, so I have the red lead going to the higher voltage and the black lead going to the negative voltage. The 12 volts here labels this battery as 12 volts, which tells me that the difference between the two terminals will be 12 volts. So what do we expect the voltmeter to read? We expect it to read positive 12 volts. Because by design, if the red lead is at the higher voltage and the black lead is at the lower voltage, the voltmeter will read a positive voltage. Now let's flip that meter around and see what happens. So now I have the black lead at the higher voltage and the red lead at the lower voltage. By design, the meter will read a negative voltage if I put the red lead at a lower voltage than the black lead. So now this reads minus 12 volts. So we usually think of positive voltage being the opposite of negative voltage, but nothing has changed here. All I did was move the meter. So is there a difference between positive and negative voltage, or is it just how I put the meter there? Interesting question. We'll answer that as we move along. Let's see what happens if we add another battery to the mix. Now I have two batteries hooked up end to end in a configuration we call series, where we have the negative, the positive, the negative, and the positive. Let's see how this works together. I'm going to take my voltmeter and I'm going to start by putting it across the lower battery. 
So I place it there and here's the voltmeter and the red lead is to the higher voltage, the black lead is to the lower voltage. It's across a 12 volt battery by definition. The battery has a 12 volt difference between here and here, so the voltmeter reads 12 volts. Let's move that meter to the upper battery. Now I have the same situation. I have the red lead to the higher voltage, the black lead to the lower voltage, 12 volts, so the meter should read positive 12 volts. Now I have the voltmeter across both batteries. What do we expect it to read? Well, I have a 12 volt battery connected in series with another 12 volt battery. That's the same as putting a 12 story building on top of another 12 story building. 12 stories plus 12 stories is 24 stories. Therefore, 12 volts plus 12 volts is 24 volts. Therefore, I expect the meter to read positive 24 volts. Now this shows a commonality between altitude and voltage. They are both potential energy. If I hold this pin and let go, it falls to the floor. And when it falls, it gains kinetic energy, the energy of motion. And when it hits the floor, it imparts that energy into the floor. However, if I hold it here and don't let go, it only has the potential to get kinetic energy. It only gains the kinetic energy if I actually let it go. So this has potential energy. Voltage is also potential energy. If I have a battery and there's no connection, it has the potential to make electrons flow around a circuit. But if there is no connection from one side to the other, those electrons can't flow, so it only has potential energy. If I hold this over the side of a 12-story building, I have so much potential energy. If I hold it out over the side of a 24-story building, I have more potential energy. So the higher I go, the more potential energy I have. And the same works with voltage. If I have 12 volts, I have so much potential energy. If I have 24 volts, I have twice the potential energy. Another thing that voltage has in common with altitude is the nature of zero and negative voltage. Let's put that voltmeter there again and look at some different scenarios. Now I have that voltmeter across both batteries, red lead to the higher voltage, black lead to the lower voltage, and it reads positive 24 volts. Let's flip that meter around. Now I have the red lead to the lower voltage and the black lead to the higher voltage, and by design, the meter now reads negative 24 volts. Let's put the black lead in the middle and read voltages with the black lead anchored there. Now we have the meter across the top battery, red lead to the higher voltage, black lead to the lower voltage, 12 volt battery, so what does the meter read? It reads positive 12 volts. Now let's move it to the bottom battery. Now I have the meter across the lower battery. I have the red lead at the lower voltage and the black lead at the higher voltage. The black lead is not actually moved, of course, it's still at the junction between the two batteries. What does the voltmeter now read? It reads minus 12 volts, because by design, if the red lead is at the lower voltage and the black lead is at the higher voltage, I get a negative reading. Now I have my red lead at the same point in the circuit as my black lead. What do I expect the meter to read now? Well, the meter tells me the difference between two voltages. Now both meters are at the same place. So what's the difference between the voltage here and the voltage here? There is no difference. So what's the meter going to tell me? It's going to give zero volts because it's telling me there is no difference between those two. This tells us another thing about voltage. Zero voltage is not the absence of voltage. Zero voltage only tells me that the red lead and the black lead are at the same voltage. So again, the voltmeter tells me the difference between two voltages. So whenever your voltmeter reads zero volts, it only means that the black lead and the red lead are at the same voltage. That could be 100 volts, that could be 1000 volts, it could be a million volts. But if both leads are at the same voltage, the meter will tell us zero. Back at Mission Bay, I'm at an altitude that people around the world have agreed is an altitude of zero. I'm at sea level. Can I go lower? Sure I can, but I need some scuba gear or a submarine. Without that, I'm stuck. But I can go higher. Let's go back to Mount Laguna and see what happens. Back here on Mount Laguna, we're at an altitude of about 6,000 feet, as you can see on my GPS. And our next stop is going to be at the Salton Sea that you can see behind me about 40 miles away. But first, we have a little stop on the way. 
And here it is. I'm out in the middle of the desert, but I'm again at an altitude of zero feet, the same as we were at the beach. But the difference here is that I can go that way and go even lower without a wetsuit. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. And our last stop is here at the shore of the Salton Sea at an altitude of about minus 230 feet. And I am not upside down. Rocks do not fall up and everything is normal. I'm only at a negative altitude because I'm at an altitude lower than some other altitude that people say is zero. And voltage is the same way. A negative voltage is only a voltage that is lower than some other voltage that someone else has called zero volts. This was the major contribution of Ben Franklin. Before his time, people thought there were two types of electricity, vitreous and resinous. He proposed that there was only one type of electricity and that the vitreous electricity and the resinous were just two different pressures of the same electrical fluid. Zero volts is even more arbitrary than zero altitude. Zero volts happens to be whatever you decide it is at the moment, and no one has ever defined an absolute zero voltage. No matter how low your voltage goes, you can always find a lower one that you can call a negative voltage compared to whatever you set as zero. So our journey started at Mission Bay, which is at sea level, which we have agreed is an altitude of zero. From there we drove to Mount Laguna, which is 6,000 feet higher, which is an altitude of positive 6,000 feet. From there we drove out to the desert where we eventually reached the same altitude that we were at Mission Bay, and so our GPS said we were once again at an altitude of zero feet. And from there, driving east, we went to altitudes below zero, and the GPS now says we're at a negative altitude, and we eventually reached the shore of the Salton Sea at minus 230 feet. So we chose sea level as an altitude of zero because it makes a lot of sense. It's something that we can use as a reference worldwide. When we have electronic circuits, zero voltage is even more arbitrary. You have to choose a point and call that zero and then measure all of your voltages from that point. Here I've drawn a stack of batteries with various voltages. I chose 7 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts, and 7 volts. I chose these voltages because this simulates the standard power supply for a personal computer. Now you may have heard that a power supply for a computer is 12 volts. Let's see if this adds up. 7 plus 5 plus 5 plus 7 is 24 volts. So if this is the same as a power supply for a PC, why is it 24 volts? Well, let's take a look at how we measure voltages inside a computer. Now I've added a voltmeter and I've put the black lead at the middle of the stack of batteries. This is the standard for measuring the voltage inside of a PC. So let's see what happens when we put this red lead at different places along this stack of batteries. So now I have the red lead at the positive terminal of this 7 volt battery. What do we expect the voltmeter to read? Well, we have the black lead at the negative terminal of this battery, the red lead at the positive terminal of this battery. We have 5 volts here and 7 volts here. That will add up to 12 volts. Positive lead at the higher voltage, negative lead at the lower voltage. So the meter is going to read positive 12 volts. Now let's move that red lead to the next level. Now I have the red lead at the positive terminal of this battery. The black lead is still at the negative terminal. There's a 5 volt difference between the leads. Red lead at the higher voltage, black lead at the lower voltage. So we expect the meter to read positive 5 volts. Now let's move the red lead down to here. So now I have the red lead at the same point as my black lead. What do I expect the voltmeter to read? Well, the red lead and the black lead are at the same voltage. The voltmeter is going to tell me the difference. There is no difference, so the voltmeter is now going to read zero volts. So I have set this level, whatever voltage that happens to be compared to something else, as my zero voltage. Now let's move the red lead to the next level. Now I have the red lead at the negative terminal of this 5 volt battery. The black lead is still at the top here, which is a positive terminal of this battery. So the black lead is at a higher voltage. The red lead is at a lower voltage. The voltage is 5 volts. So now the meter will read negative 5 volts. Now let's move that lead to the lowest point we can go to. Now I have the red lead at the lowest voltage I can reach in this stack at the negative terminal of this 7 volt battery. 
there's 5 volts plus 7 volts, that makes 12 volts. Black lead is at the higher voltage, red lead is at the lower voltage. So the voltmeter will read minus 12 volts. So by putting the black lead at this point, we have set that as our zero voltage. Quite arbitrary. We could have put the black lead anywhere in the stack. So now with this as zero voltage, I can use the red lead to measure different voltages along the stack. Plus 12, plus 5, 0, minus 5, minus 12. And if I put the meter across the entire stack, what will I read? 12 volts plus 12 volts. Lower voltage, higher voltage, it will read plus 24 volts. So just as zero altitude is arbitrary, so is zero volts. Zero volts happens to be wherever I decide to put my black lead. There are two usual choices for this point. One is to put the black lead at the lowest voltage and measure all of our voltages from there, giving us positive voltages. So if I put my black lead here and I put my red lead there, I would read what? Same voltage, zero volts, plus seven, plus 12, plus 17, plus 24. If I put my black lead here, then what will I get? Minus seven, zero, plus five, plus 10, plus 17. And we already measured here, I will get minus 12, minus five, zero, plus five, plus 12. And I could go on and measure my other voltages the same way. But most people will either plant the black lead at the lowest possible voltage or in the middle of the stack of batteries or power supplies or whatever they're using on their circuit. So in a computer, we plant the black lead at the middle point of the stack of power supplies and get both positive and negative voltage. It makes sense in a computer. Other places, positive and negative voltages don't necessarily make sense. So we'll put the black lead at the lowest possible voltage, call that zero, and then measure positive voltages from there. So once again, remember that zero volts is not an absence of voltage. This is simply 24 volts below the highest possible voltage. But if I put my black lead here, it becomes zero volts because if I put my red lead there too, that's what my meter reads. If I put my black lead here, that is 12 volts below my highest voltage, 12 volts above my lowest voltage, but if I put my black lead here and also put my red lead there, I will read zero volts. So what have we learned? We've learned that voltage is a differential, that when we measure voltage, we're always comparing one voltage to another, and a voltmeter tells us the difference between two voltages. We learned that if we have voltage sources, such as batteries, and we stack them end to end, that those voltages add together. We've also learned that voltage is potential energy. It is the potential to move electrons through a circuit and give them kinetic energy. We've also learned that measuring voltage is a lot like measuring altitude because both of them are a type of potential energy. We learned that zero volts is not the absence of voltage, but is simply when we are measuring two voltages that are the same. And we learned that negative voltage is not the opposite of positive voltage, but negative voltage is simply when we measure a voltage that is lower than some other voltage that we have designated as zero. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.